hi guys in this video we are going to talk of the code forces round 846 div 2 so we'll be talking of the problem a b a and b and for the problem c this uh, question is actually wrong or in other words you can say that the constraints provided were wrong for this particular question so either the constraint should be changed or the problem should be changed however i have actually submitted a wrong solution which gives us uh, a valid out a valid output or ac over here However, the solution is wrong. I just wanted to know what these uh, 3800 people have actually submitted. So I just uh, like wrote, wrote down the wrong solution and tested it up. So I'll be explaining you the wrong solution and uh, what the edge cases are and why that solution could actually fail. So cool with that, let's get started. Cool, so the problem is, uh, is Hyota and school. So it says that uh, today Hyota, I don't know how to pronounce it. Hayato, Hayato, yeah. Hayato came uh, home from school with homework. In the assignment, Hayato was uh, given an array A of length and the task was to find three numbers in the array whose sum is odd, right? So yeah, then they have uh, given us some gibberish. We don't require that. What we have to do is that an array is actually provided. In that array, we have to select three indices such that the elements of add pre uh, elements which are present at those indices, when they are summed up, they give us a value odd, right? So yeah, that's it for the question. Uh, then they have given us the constraints. The constraints are pretty easy. N is actually 300, but we uh, aren't really concerned about that because our uh, solution is going to be an order of n solution. So that would work anyway. Cool. So one thing of odd number is that if we want an odd number, so let's say we are adding up three numbers a, b, and c, and finally we are getting something x, right? Now x would be odd. X is let's say odd. If and only if all of these three numbers are odd. Right. Only then x can be odd or two of them are even. So two even plus one odd would give a odd or three odd would give us odd. So this is the basic condition that is required. So this is exactly what we are going to check. So let's see how we're going to do that. Cool. Let me open my solution. So in the solution over here, you can see that actually I loaded a long code. You can actually, uh, you know, make it pretty short. But this was uh, like I was just typing the, uh, typing whatever com was coming into my mind and this is the code I finally wrote. So where I am, firstly I am checking the number of odd and even elements present in the array. right? Now if the number of odd elements are greater than or equal to 3, in that case I can print any of those 3 elements. So that is what I am doing over here. right? Now in case uh, the number of even elements are greater than or equal to 2 and at least one odd element is available to me, in that case also a solution would exist. I can print any of those 2 even numbers. Or the indices of those two even numbers and the index of the of one of the odd numbers. So that's what I'm doing over here. Else, if uh, both of these cases aren't present, then the answer is no. Cool. So that was the problem A. Let's move to the problem B now. So B is not a rough problem, but yeah, uh, interesting one requires a basic intuition. So problem B states that while at Kira's house, uh, Josuk saw a piece of paper on the table with the task writ written on it. The task sounded as follows. There is an array of a, uh, array a of length n. On this array, do the following. So select an integer k. That should be greater than 1. So it cannot be equal to 1, but greater than 1. And we have to split the array into k subsegments. Right? Now when we say uh, subsegments, we actually mean contigu uh, contiguous subsegments over here. We have to calculate the sum in each of these sub subsegments or in these k subsegments individually. And then the GCD of uh, of this k sub segments needs to be taken and that would be considered as the final score we want to maximize the value of the final score at the end then they are given the definition of gcd and the definition of uh, sub segments i guess yeah so over here they have given the definition of sub segment but that's not required that's basic stuff after that they have given us the constraints so the constraint is that t is less than or equal to 10 to the power 4 and n is also less than or equal to 2 into 10 to the power 5 now the thing is that with this kind of a constraint, we cannot go for a order of n square logic. So order of n logic is what we are uh, fixating on. Then they have given us some examples. Now this question actually requires just one observation and that observation is that, okay, cool. Now let's say I have this kind of an array, right? And these are k sub segments. Now let's say its GCD is coming out to be let's say 2 right or let's say GCD is X that means all of these uh, sub segments would have X in them right or X or some multiple of X at least right 
I hope that's making sense or x i x into y x into z whatever you can say cool enough what I can do is that I can st uh, like firstly calculate the sum in total now why I'm doing this I'll explain that in a while but an uh, important observation is that let's say if my GCD uh, if I have let's say this kind uh, let's say uh, let's say three sub segments in total each of them have a some x right let's just suppose for the moment so definitely their GCD also would be x right however if I was considering this as one of the sub segment and the remaining as the other sub, sub, sub segments would their GCD be, uh, be still be x, x yeah that would be there because it's uh, it's some would be x there some would be 2x right and this would follow in any uh, any number of subsegment let's say there were k number of subsegments and each of them were having a sum x right in that case i can say that one subsegment has a sub sum x and i'll combine the remaining k minus 1 subsegments and they'll give me a sum of k minus 1 into x now even their gcd would be equal to x itself so that's the entire thing I need to know. So firstly, I can calculate the sum. So for the entire array, I'll calculate the sum. This is something I'll store. Then I'll start reversing from the left hand side. Or you can do it from right, either way you want, but this is the standard way to go. Cool. Now, when I'm at any index, I'll calculate the value of sum or the, let's call it current because sum is the value assigned to the entire sum, right? So let's call it current. So I'll know that up till this point, now I'll assume that I'm dividing my uh, array into two subsegments because if you remember over here, we said that if we divide the array into two sub segments, then uh, then uh, we, are, uh, we are bound to get the maximal answer, right? So I'll assume that I'm dividing my array into two subsegments. One of the subsegments would be the one that would be ending at this particular index and the other would start after this, right? So the sum up till here is current and the sum of this particular subsegment would be sum minus current. Then I'll check what's the GCD for these two. GCD for current or sum minus current. Right? And I'll uh, like keep saving the, uh, the GCD I'm getting or I'll just store the uh, store the maximum value in the result variable. So result would be maximum of result or this G. Right? And I'll do, do this operation for all the indices from i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 or to yeah to n minus 2 you can say because the last because the sub segments needs to, needs, uh, needs to be non-empty and once I'm done with this I'll be having the answer stored in the result variable cool so let's have a look at the code the code also is fairly simple there's nothing complicated with that cool so over here firstly I'm taking the sum so I'm using a STL function that is accumulate for this. So after I've taken the sum, I'm taking a variable current that is the current sum and a result. So result has been initialized to one because the minimum GCD you will anyway get is equal to one. So I've initialized it to one itself. Then I'm starting traversing from the uh, left hand side. In each iteration, I'm adding the value into the current. Then the remaining sum would actually be sum minus current. The remaining sum that is uh, the sum for the right hand side or the se second sub segment you can say. If rem is equal to 0 that means it, it was the last uh, element and in that case I'll break else result would be the maximum of result or whatever GCD I'm getting for rem and curve so for the left uh, left hand side segment on, and the right hand uh, right hand side uh, sub segment cool at the end I'll simply be uh, printing out the result variable cool so that's it for this now let's proceed to C now see they have actually uh, clarified that uh, C is a wrong problem because the constraint they had provided there was no way to solve this particular problem in these constraints. But still you will be uh, you will be seeing that a lot of people have actually submitted and around 3800 I guess or now yeah even 4000 people have AC submissions over here. So why is it so what kind of a logic they have used so just to test that out I, I also gave, gave it a solution right I gave it a uh, like a try. And I know that this solution is wrong. I'll prove that why this solution is wrong. But let's look at the problem. So it says uh, I'll not be going into the details of the problem, but the gist of the problem is that there are n guests, right? And all of those guests like different dishes. 
so like there, uh, there could be n dishes and each guest like uh, guest likes some dish dish out of those n choices and then there are m tables each of the table has some kind of a capacity where you can get seated cool so you have uh, on, and on each of the table you can only serve one dish right so when you serve a dish the people who will actually liking that dish would be satisfied the people who won't be liking that dish won't be satisfied at the end you will be having some satisfied people and some non satisfied people uh, obviously your uh, aim is to maximize the number of satisfied guests so that uh, that is what we need to do in this problem at the end we have to print the number of satisfied uh, guests cool so let's uh, look at the problem per se so let's start looking at the problem and the probable solution so the thing is that i am having guests so let me divide the guests into groups so let's say this is one group this is one group this is one group when i say a group i am uh, saying that okay so these people actually like uh, sushi maybe cool so these all of these people like sushi let's say these are people uh, let's say maybe two guests like sushi three guests uh, guests like nuggets um maybe four gets or like two gets like uh, water i don't know okay le let it be cool and then we have tables now the tables would be uh, would be in such a fashion that the entire se seating of the tables would sum up to more, more than a uh, sum up to number let's say x and x would be greater than or equal to n so it would always be possible to get all the guests seated but now what i can do now let's say this table had a seating arrangement of 3 so 3 people can sit on this table and this table had a seating arrangement of 4 let's say so how can you uh, perform further so you can say that I, uh, all the three people who like nuggets would sit on this right and i'll serve nuggets on this so at the end three people would be happy because they wanted uh, to get nuggets and they got nuggets right however now four people are remaining so these two and these two right So now these two, uh, four people would get seated on this, and over here, let's say I serve sushi. sushi. So when I say so serve sushi, the people who actually like water won't be happy, but the people who like sushi would be happy, right? So in total, the number of satisfied people would be three over here. So the uh, the people who like nuggets and the people who like sushi would be satisfied. So our answer would be five, right? Now the way people have actually done it, and even the solution I had used in my wrong. Uh, wrong answer or the so solution that is currently accepted but is definitely wrong is that we'll start storing the values into a priority queue or into a max heap and we'll be storing the uh, the custom account or the guest count let's say when i say guest count i mean the people so like like over here two people like sushi three like nugget and two like water so i'll be storing th two three and two so basically the frequencies right so i'll be storing that in a, a priority queue then what i'll do is that uh, since it's a max heap so the top element would always be max and i'll also reverse sort the tab table uh, tables based based on the number of seats they have so the table which is having more number of seats would would be coming first right so what i'll do then is then i'll uh, that the max uh, the maximum element in the max heap would represent the group that has maximum number of guests so i'll try to assign this group to this table cool the table which is having uh, which currently has the maximum number of elements uh, maximum number of se uh, seats available right now in case some of the guests are remaining then i'll uh, again store the remaining guest into the priority queue now let's say this has the seating arrangement of x the number of guests in this particular group were let's say y And y is greater than x. In that case, I'll store y minus x back back into the priority queue. And I'll in, uh, now since this table is actually book completely book, I'll move to the next index, and then I'll come uh, come like keep doing this loop until and unless uh, I am out of tables, or my priority queue is empty. So there would be two conditions. So first condition is that my priority PQ is empty, and the second condition I'm out of tables. cool enough so prima facie that this might uh, might look like a valid solution but it's not because we are going by a greedy strategy and it's possible that a greedy uh, strategy might give you a wrong answer now let's take a example for that so for example we have six people 
who like nuggets yeah i actually like nuggets so good five people who actually like let's say sushi on the table we were having were let's say five four and two cool enough so this is already sorted in the reverse order that's fine so in my maxi i would be having six as the element over here then i'll say i need to assign six people to a table so i'll say okay i'll assign five people to this table now i'll be having one people one person remaining so this would be my priority queue right now then i'll say maximum element is this and currently i'll i would be over here because this table is completely filled so i'll say i need to assign five so okay i'll assign four people over here cool and now my priority could uh, queue actually has one and one person right yeah five minus four is one cool now even this is completely done so i'll assign uh, i'll have now my priority queue top element has this so i'll say that i have a uh, i have a, uh, one i have a group with only one guest and i have a table with seating quantity two i want to make this person sit over here right and that then a loop would end over here itself cool so in total the number of guests that were happy that are happily seated is 5 plus 4 plus 1 that is 5 plus 4 plus 1 that is 10 right now this is the wrong answer now why is that the case so let me rewrite the down so this are the groups we had and this is the sitting arrangement we had cool uh, now what if i had assigned these two tables to six right so if the guests that are in this particular group were seated on this table then all of them would have been happy because i would have served uh, nuggets on this table and they would have been happy and on this table i could have made the guests from this group sit and i could have served sushi on this so they also would have been happy have been happy right so a total of 11 guests would have been satisfied however since they weren't so the solution is actually wrong if you want to see i can actually run this uh, on my local uh, local system so this is exact question i uh, solution i'd submitted let me try to run this up cool so you can see that the answer is 10 this is the same example i am having 11 guests six of them actually like one dish and the uh, remaining five actually like the other dish uh, the table i'm having has a, a seating capacity of 5 4 and 2 the answer should have been 11 but it's returning 10 because i know this is a wrong solution cool so yeah i know this is wrong solution the uh, like there are multiple ways we uh, in which we can actually calculate the right way of doing it but some of the ways are actually uh, of exponential uh, time complexity so they uh, i can actually do it via a technique called maximum subsequence sum or the close, closest subsequence sum or even an advanced variant of that but that is actually too complicated and on top of that the time complexity it has is also big it cannot be solved in this particular time complexity and that's the reason even the authors for the context actually took back the problem so cool guys that's it for the video i hope you like the solution and the understanding of behind it if there's any doubt you can always let me know in the comment section below cool guys thanks a lot bye bye